guys again, Alexandra here. Today we're having a look at 16 on-page SEO factors that you need to update at all times or not. And if you're interested in learning more about SEO writing, I have left a link for you in the description below. So let's get started with the tips. So the first tip I have for you is to keep your URLs short and sweet and always include your main keyword in them. Now, a URL is not something to change all of the time because you will just have to add URLs back and forth. And really, nobody can guarantee that Google will consider having redirects as a bad aspect of your website. So let's say you are writing a guide for email marketers. Instead of going for just email marketing as your keyword, you can opt for a keyword like email marketing guide or email marketing guide for beginners to target three keywords at the same time, really. My favorite thing to optimize at all times are headings. Now, normally you want your main keyword to appear in one or two large headings like H2s or H3s. And you also want secondary keywords in these as much as possible. Keep in mind that you can have one title as your title tag and another headline within the actual article. So maybe you can use the title tag to keep things optimized for SEO purposes and then use the headline of the article on your blog to really get people to read your article by adding some subtle CTAs or just maybe a promise of offering a free template cheat sheet, anything like that. My favorite thing to optimize at all times are headings. Now, normally you want your main keyword to appear in one or two large headings like H2s or H3s. And you also want secondary keywords in these as much as possible. The thing is that you will have to optimize these headings as much as possible because the reader intent and the volume for a specific keyword you have used within your headings can change in time. So maybe a keyword like email marketing benefits won't be as popular as email marketing advantages. So in this case, if you do notice that the volume and interest for email marketing advantages is higher than the benefits keyword, you want to add in your advantages keyword within the heading and then use email marketing benefits as a simple secondary keyword within your section. You also want your main keyword to appear within the first 100 words of your article. Do not try too hard to make it fit in the first sentence because it might seem unnatural to have your keyword there, but the first 100 words will do for Google. The next thing I always suggest doing is adding your main keyword here and there, but you do not want to overdo it and end up doing keyword stuffing. Instead, try to get your main keyword in one or two headings, in bolded sentences, and here and there throughout the article. But instead of having the same exact keyword within all paragraphs, you want, for example, to have one paragraph with an email marketing guide keyword. And in the next paragraph, you're going to add a secondary keyword like sign up forms or email list. Next, we're talking outbound links. So you will inevitably have to add some links to reports, studies to back up your claims. And this is perfectly fine, but you need to make sure that these links come from high authority websites that can actually bring some value for your audience. And as much as possible, try to post yourself on those websites and then link to your articles from your blog as well. Something to really update on a daily basis, if possible, are your inbound links. And here we have two possible situations. First, as you are writing your article, in this case, with our example, the email marketing guide, you want to reference some of your past content or different pages already on your website, like maybe an article on email marketing tools or how to create a sign-up form. Now, if you are going to link to articles on different topics like social media marketing, that is perfectly fine, but it's not going to help your article directly. Instead, it can bring some traffic to your past content. 
The second situation occurs as you are writing your article. Once you publish it, you want to link back to it from your past articles. So you are going to two or three articles you already have on your blog and adding a link within them to your new article. Now in time, these links can add up. So this is why you need to keep a close eye on them and update them on a frequent basis so that you don't have too many keywords within the same paragraph and really within the same article. Now, Google is becoming more interested in the web page experience of users. So one thing to always monitor is your page speed. Now, this is an SEO technical factor. So you might want to just use page speed insights from Google and see where you can make some tweaks and then talk to maybe your developers to help you make the changes. But one of the things anyone can do at all times is to make sure the size of their images is as small as possible so it doesn't take too much time to load, as well as you can remove some of the pop-ups on your website in case they are slowing down the web page. Now, the next thing to keep an eye on at all times is making sure your website is responsive. Mobile traffic is growing and will always be, so Google is penalizing websites that are not optimized for their mobile users. And really, to be honest, there's loads of us who won't read a website if it doesn't display correctly on mobile devices. At number 10, we have another favorite of mine, and that is optimizing your meta descriptions. Now, this is where your copy skills come in handy, as really the only things you need to change are which keywords you include, how many keywords you include, where you place them, preferably at the beginning of the meta description, as well as you will always want to include a call to action to get people to actually click on the link and convince them that it's a valuable article. Something many writers miss is keeping the reader intent in check. So let's take an example like email marketing jobs. One day people could look for a guide on how to become an email marketer. The next day they could search for actual jobs. And then maybe there's a book that becomes popular on this topic, a course, and really the reader intent can change monthly sometimes. Usually you want to do this research every quarter or at least once a year. Now, if you notice these changes in the reader intent, what you want to do is go back to your article and update it from its headings, links to just the idea you went for. And this is especially important if you have an article that's ranking quite well because it could crash from those top 10 rankings if you don't update it to match the reader intent. The next thing to avoid like the plague is having duplicate content. Now, this is super common with e-commerce websites, but in the case of your blog, the biggest mistake you could be making is having multiple categories for one article. Now, using blog categories is perfectly fine for breaking down your content and maybe adding in some extra keywords, but you want only one category per article. Next, we're talking again about images. So besides making sure their size is as small as possible while also maintaining their quality, you will want to include your keyword in the alt tag as well as the file name. So for the alt tag, try to include your main keyword or your secondary keyword and keep it as descriptive as possible to really show people what that image is about. And before you even upload your image onto your article, you want to make sure the file name also includes your keyword or something related. Next is data markup. Now, data markup has been confirmed as not being a ranking factor for Google. However, you can use this data markup settings to really get your content, not articles, but things like recipes, 
or how to guide sometimes get them on top of the actual results via those little image and text snippets this does not guarantee that if you're there you will also be among the top 10 results but it's a good way to get extra exposure next i want you to go to your blog right now and see if you have social sharing options and really kind of see if they are placed so that they are visible to the reader now you want these so that you can get some extra shares and really show people that you want them to share your content. Finally, we're talking about avoiding black hat SEO techniques. So that means you need to check even your past articles, yes, even the very first ones on your blog, and see if you have any spammy links, duplicate content, Two of the biggest issues I see, especially with new websites, is one, having spam comments. Now, these can be easily deleted and prevented by approving comments beforehand. And two, never submit your website to shady directories or just avoid using tools and services that promise to give you 50 backlinks from directories with just one click. If you have any question related to on-page SEO, let me know. I have left a link for you to one of my SEO writing courses in the description below. It's free to join and you will learn how to actually use keywords as you are writing. If you have any other video you'd like to see from me, just let me know. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you next time. Take care.